Hello and welcome back. Today, I'm going to share the first few things I did after I hooked up my Solval Clipper screen. Basically, these are some pretty important and easy things to do in order to get quality prints. So, I wanted to get them done and out of the way and share how I did it for anyone interested in learning. I'm not going to lie, the main reason I haven't switched to Clipper until now is because I found all this pretty intimidating. And without the plug and play ability of the Clipper screen, I probably wouldn't be making this video to begin with. So if you're like me, rest assured, mainsail at least is a lot easier to navigate than I expected. Anyway, let's jump right into this video. Alright, so first off, I wanted to organize the dashboard and mainsail. I don't like how I have to scroll down to see everything, like you can see the macros are all the way at the bottom. So I came up here and clicked this gear icon which opened up the interface settings window. I'm on the dashboard tab as you can see on the left side, and this is where I can change the layout. It has some preset layouts on the top here, and I'm using widescreen but I don't really like the layout. So what I did was grab these tiles and just organize them to my liking. I could see them moving in the background which was nice, and it meant that I didn't have to go in and out of the menu to check if I actually liked the layout. Up next, I was originally typing the temperatures in here in order to heat up the bed or nozzle, but I figured out I can go back into the settings, go to the presets tab on the left, and in there I can add whatever temperatures I want. So in this case, I'm making one for PLA. I left the custom G-code section empty and that's it. Now I can click the presets drop down up here and select PLA and it automatically sets the temperatures for me so I do not have to type them in anymore, which is pretty nice. Something I noticed after I printed a couple things I sliced in Cura was that it doesn't put the picture of the model up on the clipper screen. So back in Cura, I went to Extensions, Post Processing, Modify G-Code, clicked add a script, and create thumbnail. Then I changed the size to 300 by 300, and that's it. I should only have to turn this on one time, and it should stay on for everything I slice from now on. While I was in here, I went ahead and sliced and saved this cube for printing because I'm going to need it a little later. Next, I ran a PID tune. I did that by typing this line in the console on the dashboard. I could also click the console tab on the left menu, but it's quicker right here from the dashboard. Tuning the PID takes a little while, so I'm going to speed up the video. When it was finally done, I could see the new PID settings, and it told me right there that I can save these new settings by typing save underscore config, so I just copied and pasted that in the console, and then it updated and rebooted. Up next, I wanted to calibrate the E-steps on the extruder. So I set my calipers to exactly 70 millimeters and came and made a mark at 70 millimeters on the filament going into the extruder. The bottom of my mark is exactly at 70 millimeters. Back in mainsail, I set the nozzle to 215 degrees. Then I typed G91 in the console. This puts the printer in incremental positioning mode. Then I typed G1 E50 F60 which tells the printer to extrude 50 millimeters of filament at a rate of 60 millimeters per second. After that was done, I measured the amount of filament left up to my mark that was at 70 millimeters, and I wrote that down. Back in mainsail, I clicked machine on the left side, and then I scrolled over to this list until I saw printer.cfg, and opened that up. In here, I pressed Control F on the keyboard, to open up a search box where I typed rotation and hit next. This jumped me to the stepper section in the configuration file instead of having the scroll all the way down. But once I got here, I did scroll down to the extruder and saw that it has a rotation distance of 4.59. 
so I wrote that down as well. Then I came to this website where I can calculate what my new rotation distance should be based on the extrusion. I'll leave a link to this website in the description. But in the first box, I put the rotation distance that was in the configuration file, which was 4.59. And for the second box, it wants the actual extrude distance, which I got by opening up calculator and subtracting the 20.32 millimeter that I was left with from my 70 millimeter mark, which tells me I actually extruded 49.68 millimeters. And then in the last box, I was trying to extrude 50 millimeters, so I put that in there and hit calculate. And it says my new rotation distance should be 4.56. So I copied that and pasted it into the rotation distance for the extruder. Then I came up here to the top and clicked save and restart and waited for it to reboot. Up next, I printed that calibration cube from earlier and took some measurements of the X, Y, and Z so I could change the rotation distance of those steppers. Changing those distances for these is basically the exact same process for the E-steps from before where I find the rotation distance in the printer CFG file and use the same rotation calculator. So in the configuration file, the rotation distance for the X stepper was 40, so I put that in the first box, and then my actual measurement, which was 19.87, and since the cube is supposed to be 20 by 20 by 20, I'm going to put 20 in the last box. And it gave me a new rotation distance of 39.74, so I came and changed that 40 in the configuration file to 39.74. And as I said, it's the same for all the rest. So I'll just fast forward through changing the Y and Z rotation distances. And after I got all those changed, I went ahead and clicked save and restart. And after it rebooted, I printed the calibration cube again. And here's the result. Okay, and now that all this is done, I can finally print something to see if my efforts paid off. And this new case for the clipper screen turned out perfect. If you want this model, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, unfortunately, it is not free, but it is a high quality design and it's fairly inexpensive. And if you do get it, I highly suggest leaving the creator a thumbs up and checking out his YouTube channel. He is a lot more skilled than I am at this stuff. <laughs> All right, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in, catch you in the next one, and as always, have the best day ever. Today, I'm going to share the first few things I did after I switched to the... I'm going to share the first few things I did after I hooked up my Solvo... God. I'm on the dashboard tab, as you can see on the left side, and this is where I can config... So I set my calipers to exactly 70 millimeters and came and made a mark at 70 millimeter on at 70 back in main shale main shale main shale now i go back to main shale so in the configuration file i saw that the x stepper has a distance from so in the configuration jesus christ english